Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Xiao Talk Show. Today is 2020, Saturday, June 6th,、uh, and four、uh, o'clock, 4:30 in the afternoon, San Francisco time. So, so what is the topic today? So let's、uh, go to Xiao Talk Show, and、uh, so type a topic. Okay, you. Type a topic in the、uh, video YouTube chat. Else, we go, I'm going to、uh, start to talk random. I'm gonna talk about some keyboard and stuff, random stuff going through my blogs. So first of all, this the background image. Now this is a fantastic shell, seashell. Now seashells are the most ama- amazing thing. Okay, let me tell you about the seashell. Uh, good morning, L. Cook, Luis, and post. Good morning, Alan. Post your questions, okay?、Um, and、uh, let's talk about seashell. You know the, the seashells are amazing. I actually started to collect them back in two thousand two. You know that was at the time I was working. So I, you know, I went to、uh, I went to eBay or. San Francisco, you know, I bought some of these seashells. They are spectacular. They, you know, they are the product of nature. And look at this one. Okay,、uh, of course, for those of you who study seashells biology, there are names to you know. There are people collecting seashells. So this one is Venus comb. <laughs> you can you can imagine why is it imagined? Why why is it named that? Venus comb. It's they are extremely delicate. Actually, I have it here. Should I uh should I show it? Because I recently I moved out of my apartment, uh, which I lived for twelve years. So there's a box of seashells which I haven't opened for ten plus years. So I have to <laughs> clean them, open you know, move them. So I found them. Uh, let me know if you want to see it. Okay, so I bring you a bunch of seashells, the great、uh, seashells. Actually, I should, but I want some reaction. Okay, say say yes. Okay, am I am I am I going? Okay, I guess I am. So seashells, um, yeah, the the you know, so I bought a bunch of them. So look at these, you know, they are product of nature. You know, it、uh, naturally happens. So look at this one, tusk. Now this this one is called tusk shell. It's just like an elephant tusk. Um, and let me. Okay, so let me give you an introduction of seashells. Why are they fascinating? And this one is top shell. This is called top shell because it looks like a top. You know, you spin it, and look at the bottom.、Uh, extremely fascinating. And and so you have varieties of、sp- spiral shape. Now look at this one. Okay, this one is another beautiful, beautiful one. This is pretty small, tiny. So I bought. I got a bunch of them. I collected. Actually, let, let me go get them. Okay. Type comments. Okay. Type here. Type. Okay. I only got four people watching. So let me get the seashells and、uh, let's see. What we'll talk about. So what I have here is one bag, one one box of seashells.、Uh, let's see where's my video. And I'm going to show you this. You see this this.、Uh, so there is my keyboard. I'm going to talk about that. This is my keyboard. Let's see if I can make it large. Nah, so you, okay. I need to. Actually, I need to make it. And so hold on a second, okay? Give me a minute. Let me、uh, adjust the video so you you can see a big one.
So I was so the OBS crashed because every time I try to adjust it, it crashes. So let me try. Uh, let me try to add a video again. Video capture device. Okay, what a mess. So I should be back. Okay, so What the fuck up? Hi Freddy. Finally I got someone say something. So I'm going to show you my seashells, okay? So you look at the Okay, so you look at my desk and th there it is. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh god, this is so fucked up. I cannot yeah. I'm just going to show you some of them. Okay, so you see this one? This one is heavy. Uh, I need I need lighting. Yeah, this is okay, so so you see this one incredible incredibility. You see this is a scallop kind of shell, but you see it's it's got a needles all over all over it. It can open up. This is Andrew from Discord. Hey Andrew. So Andrew, you have a question to ask me, ask your questions, okay? And be specific. And I'll talk about it. And this is the this is the Venus comp. Yeah, hold on a second. You see the the Venus comp, very delicate. Shall now now the lighting and everything is all screwed up, but and there's a tiny one. You see, there's a tiny one. Now, so seashells they are amazing. They they are incredible. They they are natural product. And uh, and look at this one. Okay, let me show you some of these. This one, this is a monster. Okay. Now the camera sucks. This is Logitech. Hey, Bart. Good morning, Bart, to Germany. So this this purple. Now the camera really lousy. It's really lousy, so I cannot. So it doesn't show well. And then you have this one heavy. You can hit someone with on the head with this one. Now, now you see seashells. They are all spirals. You know they are all spirals. But you can see the variations in this in the spiral. For example, this one. They you know they spiral 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 and they are they they got this kind of a curves or how you call that fold. You know and sp spectacular. You know nature produces this. You know if if you know it's sometimes you we human animals make trinkets like decorative glasses or some dolls on your you put on your desk, and those are pretty, right? Let me show you the pattern here of this one. Can you? No, the fucking Logitech camera. This is Logitech nice something. Don't buy Logitech camera. It sucks and expensive. You know it cannot focus. It's supposed to be autofocus. But anyway, look at the pattern. Shit, it doesn't display. Okay, now it's better. You see, now you see this this shell. So they are all spirals, but they are amazing. Uh, the this one is heavy. This amazing variety of the spirals and patterns on it. Okay, but now let me show you something different. Now this this one is very light. This is uh, called bonnet shell. Uh, why is it called bonnet? I suppose it's like the bonnet hat or something. And and now look at this one, spectacular. This is also very light and fragile. You know, this some of them are heavy. 
for example this one is thick and heavy like you cannot uh, you cannot break it well I, I guess you can if you throw it throw it but some of them are super fragile like this one let me see if I can get it to focus not really okay uh, fractal geometry yeah, good collection of shells oh, okay yeah fractal geometry is you know fractal geometry you know then you we have uh, the C stars you know uh, comparative com comparatively they are not as interesting then you have this one heavy this one is another heavy one now the thing is there are all varieties of spirals and you can and this one you know it's got patterns and shiny too but there's one more thing I want to show you let's see if I can find it then I have like one bag of small ones like if you look at the pictures on the web it's hard to determine the size and then you have this variation you know this this one is long like a screw okay <laughs> so okay wait there's one more thing I want to show you then um, there's one more very dead 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 uh, delicate one I cannot Oh, here you see this one this this one you know amazing this one look at this one okay now it, how do you um, imagine guess how much it weights this one weights about one gram so it's like uh, it's it's it weights about like two pieces of paper like one piece of paper so super light and fragile and this one so th this one so now that's about my seashells okay let me show you let me let me turn the camera back and let me show you the pictures okay put the camera back so there is this box you are looking at you know the, this box this is a uh, Hewlett Packard. It's supposed to be originally was a bunch of cables or a keyboard or something. Ah. Oh, shit. Okay, let's go back to the 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 pictures of seashell, and you can see uh, how they are varieties of spirals. You know, you have the super long one and you have the very flat one then you have this uh, this tusk one with very little twist okay they are so we are talking about the general shape of the spiral then you have the decorations on the shell I mean like they for example they grow um, spikes like this one uh, and uh, then then this one you see this kind of fold I showed you this one before it kind of has has this kind of fold and this one by the way this is a um, uh, this is a uh, fossil this is actually a fossil I don't know how many years old uh, it could be 1000 years old or something you know my my aunt my aunt gave it to me uh, this one is from Taiwan so the variety of the the general variety of the shape of the spiral you have flat you have little twist you have you know long spiral or then you have the decorations on the on the shell like like spikes spikes and fold spikes and fold uh, and this one folding and this one look at this one uh, crumbled it's like crumbled uh, you know variation of the spiral this one is super light like one one gram like uh, two piece of papers then you have then let's talk about about the patterns on the shell you see then you have these patterns now according to Stephen Wolfram these patterns are generated by cellular automata now look at this this one is heavy I also have it there um, you see the the patterns are generated by cellular automata and look at this one I showed this one before 
So now we can look at some uh, mathematical model of these shells. Now, now there's an equation that describes this. Uh, or, the, or this one is fantastic. Look at the the, the spiral. The, the, they are extremely beautiful. And by the way, these are cheap. You know, if you go to eBay, you, you know, they are three dollars or five dollars. But if you actually go to San Francisco or some, you know. Uh, some souvenir place it's cheaper you can find all these are uh, not expensive at all and also I took this photo back in 2002 a snail this is an actual photo of a snail without a uh, photoshop I you know it's a snail on a, on a white paper plate you know we have snails in the garden so it's you know it's so so these seashells to me it's amazing it's it's quite a, um, amazing. Then you have okay then you have this the X-ray of the shells you can see the inside the shells the twisting they also have twisting inside the shells. Okay so that's about seashells but let me show you some mathematical models of the shells then we're gonna uh, answer you know, the questions. Okay, so I back then in around 2002, I actually bought this book. This is a big, giant, photographic book. Uh, you know, I bought it like 20 years ago. Uh, so let me show you the mathematical. Okay, so hold on a second. So. Yeah, and we have this cutting half view cutting half view of the shell you can see there's twisting inside it and this is this type of shell is called a uh, cowie shell cowie shell and you see the twisting inside and this one spectacular you see this spiral you see the one you know one of the f most fundamental th thing interesting about them is the shape the general shape of the spiral so this one is you know very angular it's almost like a staircase and yet then you see this one and you see this one this one is called angular window trap I don't have this one but there are people collecting seashells you know they collect them then you can see this one uh, the technical name for this is La Latexis Markway something like that I don't have this one okay so now let's look at the math models so you see this one this is strong uh, in Mathematica and here is the parametric formula you can actually plot it I, I did this one you well it requires some programming so because you want to show part of it as transparent so I did this one a long time ago 20 years ago and uh, Yeah, so you know it would be interesting if you can come up come up with a formula. Now this is actually would be a great exercise for for you guys who studying calculus, uh, not even calculus. You know, just try to come. Yeah, it, it's a good uh, puzzle. Try to come up with a formula that will draw. For example, draw this one. Uh, wait, what? For example, draw this one come up with a formula parametric formula uh, you know XYZ you plot in 3d X is a function X equals to a function Y equals to a function uh, Z equals to a function a function of two variables usually U and V okay so you plot it so you want to create a parametric formula that that draws this one you know with the with the stripes on it and also you can try to come up come up with a formula that draws this one so that's the thing that's my point you know you want to come up with a formula that that draws varieties of these uh, spirals that would be a great exercise okay I haven't done it and and you know over the years someone has sent me formulas you know but I didn't um, got to, to talk to them much Okay, let me read the comments and let's see where we go now. Um, what's going on with my video? 
stupid YouTube. Okay, so um, hi everyone. Uh, collection of shells. Uh, did you collect them all yourself? Yeah, back in about twenty years ago, two thousand two, in California. Yes. S uh, some some of them. I I think most of them, like eighty percent of them, I bought on e eBay in two thousand two. I think you can still buy them on eBay. Uh, pretty much like my parents collected a lot of shells. Okay. Uh, more than one shell is bloat. <laughs> Note how a hermit crab will only use one shell at a time. Alan says, how can you call yourself a real hermit if you have more than one shell? This shell should be collected, broken up, and distributed to the people. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, no comments. Okay, what? Okay, what's the next topic? Uh, I'm gonna just talk about random things and seashells. Okay. Let's see. Okay, let's talk about keyboard. Let me show you some more keyboard stuff. Close. 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 PC keyboard reviews reviews. So let's go to my keyboard blog. Let me tell you um, my recent experience with uh, some of my keyboards. And actually, let me get the expo expo. Expose, I suppose you're supposed to pronounce it exposed. So they actually have a USB C, USB C. You know, I've been, I've been uh, studying USB history two days ago. You guys may have seen it. If you haven't already joined Discord, you know, I've been posting about. There's there's someone who talk about the history of USB. Like why, why do we have so many different USB plugs? That's really confusing. Uh, after you watch the video, it kind of makes sense the reasons why we have so many. Uh, you know, make sense in some technical way. But, but we could also say it's rather just stupid. I, actually, it's not really stupid. It because you know as time goes on, things change. You know, uh, you know, before when USB come up, there is no smartphone. You know, we don't have smartphone before. So, but then one day, s smartphone becomes popular. So US USB started. You need to uh, decrease the size. So you have the you start to have micro USB. So you have you have a evolution of USB uh, plugs. And in short, USB C is the best one. USB C, as far as we know, is supposed to be the the ultimate, the final. You know, plug USB C. So this this keyboard actually uses USB C. So this expo expose. Okay, so let me plug in. Actually, let me show you this. You can see my keyboard magnify. You see. Okay, so expose. Okay, so we have the Kinesis Advantage Two. Now I'm using it as my main now, and now this is this this is the ultimate hacking keyboard. You see, it comes in two pieces, you know, one and two. And now I'm using it as a macro keypad. For example, switch to the last application, one single key press, you know, one single key press. Uh, maximize window, one single key press. Uh, doesn't doesn't work in o OBS because OBS is not OBS does not conform to the full Mac UI interface guidelines. Fuck, and it crashes all the time. OBS open source. Fuck. Okay, so let me show you. For example, let me show you um, on Chrome. So I press the key. You see, uh, on the Mac that is Control Command. I mean Control Command F. You know Mac. So anyway, let me plug in the uh, expose. Okay, so you can see the light shine. Where is it? 
plug it in. You see, jum 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 jum. <laughs> Fantastic. And you can adjust the light. Yeah, I don't want to, but anyway, let me show you.、Um, let me press some keys. Okay, so actually, let's try it. You see, it fades off. So you can adjust the colors to different kind of different、uh, flashing styles. Now let's go back to. So there is my keyboard. So so recently, because I was moving and so on, I was using the. So let's go to my keyboard block. Okay, so. And、uh, close hide this, cause I'll talk show.、Um, Emacs back to the power of Emacs. Show in browser, and this is my keyboard bug. And、uh, I want to tell you that I was using. Okay, so let me show you this. Okay, so I was using Kinesis, of course, for the past four years, every day. But in、uh, about three months ago, two months ago, I started to use this one. Um, ultimate hacking keyboard, and and here is the expose. So let me show you. So I started to use ultimate hacking keyboard for the past two or three months every day as my my main keyboard because first of all because I'm moving the Kinesis is hot you know I'm moving on on the go、I'm, I don't know where I'm going to live so I I lived in a friend's house because of the COVID nineteen、uh, you know there's a reason so. So I moved to a friend house, and then I moved to my mom's house. So, so I was using this one, very portable. I've been using this one、uh, as my daily driver, you know, my main keyboard for the past two or three months. You know, the 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 keyboard nerds, the idiots, they 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 have the term daily driver, drive drive their ass. Okay, the proper term is just my my main keyboard, not driver. Fuck. Jargon, daily driver, my ass. So this is my main keyboard for the past two months. Then, then about two days ago, yesterday, I switched back to、um, to the Kinesis as my main keyboard. So I can tell you my experience. Like a lot of people want to know, so which one is better? Which one is better? Well, first of all, it depends on what your needs. Of course, if you want the, if you want it to be portable, then you want this, right? If you know if. Portability is not a concern. You want this. Also, this, this with the bow shape, you need to spend some time to learn.、It. And also, this is much more expensive. This is one hundred dollars more than this one. So you make a, you have to make a decision. There's no like the best one. But I can tell you my experience on using them. Which one is definitely the Kinesis is much more comfortable.、Uh, absolutely, it's much more comfortable. And、uh, I, the ultimate hacking, I don't actually don't I didn't like it too much、uh, because it doesn't have too many keys, too few keys. Also, it's not a grid layout. You see this slanted、uh, shit.、Uh, but it's the most programmable keyboard. Okay, it's the、uh, the most power in programmability. Like right now, as I, as I showed you, I'm using it as a、uh, keypad. So you you see. I can program the keys、uh, very easily. For example, this key is, if I press it, it's going to call a macro. Okay, I click on macro, and、uh, and I choose the macro I want, which is Max Win. So I say remap key, then I just click save to keyboard, and it's saved to the keyboard's memory. And same thing for the others. So if you want to add a ma macro, you go here. You can say add a macro. Then you can. You can either record it or、uh, choose what macro you want to do. So, what what macro do we want to do? I don't know. So we can start to you know press a key, scan code. Let's say、um, let's say cut. Okay, let's pick、uh, X cut. So we want cut on the Mac. It's Command X. Okay. So so and and、uh, let's give it a name. So let's say. 
dot cut okay when the name start with a dot that's my convention for it to mean it's for the Mac so so we creating a new macro dot cut command X save okay so it's done so we have a new macro here um, cut then we go to the keyboard so we have several key maps let's say Mac Mac keypad so I can add a key here you can choose a key press or you can choose you can make this key switch layer or you can make this key do some mouse mouse stuff or you can make this key do some macro so we want the macro uh, the macro we just created which is uh, cut there it is cut okay so remap key so it's done now you see there now you just have to save to keyboard so I click on here I don't know if you can see that so I can click on here save to keyboard so now that key is uh, cut okay so that's uh, that's that's about you know so so the expose is extremely programmable um, but as far as comfort goes ab definitely the wait so I, I did a video re review of the Ottoman hacking keyboard so anyway the Kinesis is much more comfortable for sure now about expose I didn't use this keyboard too much the reason is that I got this back in 2007 the first prototype and uh, back then they don't have the software to program the keys yet but then a newer when by the time they have a software to program the keys it doesn't work with my keyboard because they changed the you know the, ch the they changed the firmware or something so I have no way to because I'm typing on Vorac, but this is a quality by default. So I have to use operating systems way to uh, change to quality. For example, I can set to Vorac here. But still, that's not good enough for me because, especially for the Expo, because you see, it got many repeated keys. For example, this enter here. There's another enter here. Let me show you. Let me show you actually by video, so you can. You see there's the enter key here then there is another enter key here and uh, there's there is the shift key here but you also so this is also shift 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 and uh, shift so three shift keys then you have this uh, this control key one of them that one too three of them control key also the backspace I mean the uh, whoops shit so that key is also duplicated it's also this one and I don't want uh, you see so so you see many keys have more than one key so in that situation when you use the operating system to program it you cannot be specific you know because they are duplicated so I lost um, you know it's a big loss I don't have you know to not be able to um, control the keyboard with with my with you know you lost the programmability of the keyboard so you have to I have to use the operating system and that sucks so that's that's that is the reason I haven't used this keyboard much but on occasion I do use this keyboard so for comparison for typing purposes among these three the Kinesis is the best okay it's the best I recommend red switches don't get brown but get red okay I recommend red switches then the the second most comf 
comfortable is this one. It's actually a joy to use. Uh, the only drawback is that it's not split. You know, it's one piece flat, so it's portable. You can carry it. Now the ultimate hacking keyboard, of course, it's it's very good and it's the got the best programmability. For example, you, I have several um, key maps or you call profiles in gaming in gaming keyboards they call it profiles. So you can have Mac profile, your Vorac, Core Mac, for Mac or for Windows, you know, you can have several ones. So you can and you can it's the most powerful in programmability. But uh, but as far as comfort goes, it's not that great. And also, you see, it's very highly uh, high quality keyboard, the highest build quality of of them all. I would say, uh, yeah, as far as build quality, it's better. It's better than both of them. Uh, because you can see, I showed I showed before. There's you know they use magnets to. You can see this is the, you know, magnets. You can you can connect the two pieces together. So it's really high quality keyboard. But however, uh, you know, this kind of uh, it's rather. Turns out you don't need them to be this way. Like if you're gonna use a split, you are almost you are never going to connect them together. If you are if you um want them connected you just buy a single you know you just buy a one piece keyboard you don't you don't need them to be uh, like that so anyway that's my that's my uh, that's what I want to say about those keyboards okay anything else comments guys uh, Maybe that's it. Maybe uh, otherwise that's it for today. Andrew, are you still here? So if you want to ask me questions about my life, ask it now. Portability. Uh, Michael Wagner, how do you use arrow keys on those 60% keyboard switching profile? You can, you know, you just hold on one key and the other key become arrow. Let me show you, okay. You hold this key, do you see this smart key? So you hold it down, then the right hand side, let me show you. So you hold the mod key, the right hand side, I, J, K, L become arrow. You know that's how you press arrow. I don't like that at all. You know because every time you do arrow, for example, if you want to play Pac-Man, you you cannot play with one hand. Every it's very annoying. These sixty percent keyboard idiots. You know I really despise those sixty percent keyboard people. You know this. <laughs> they you know they 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 like sixty percent. Yeah, and also. So every time you you need to press arrow keys, you have to hold down this smart key same thing with the function key so if you want to press F10 you have to press hold down mod then F10 then release F10 then release mod now in some in some applications Photoshop GIMP Second Life or even Emacs when you want to press F10 sometimes you want shift F10 or meta F10 or alt F10 then on this 60% keyboard then it's gonna be mod alt F10 so it gets very complex. It's idiotic. So for my case, actually, let me show you. So, but you see, but this one is very programmable. So actually, I don't. So I actually program. For example, if you look at my uh, Vorac Mac profile, you can see I have the arrow keys here. Now those, you see, those are physical arrow keys. <laughs> I programmed them that way so I don't have to press smart but the problem is you know because it's only it's 60 percent keys I mean it's only got 60 keys not many keys so once if you make this arrow then you lost 
you know, you lost the control old modifier on the right side. And it gets complex, you see. You have a shift here. So I make this key dual function. That is, if you press, if I press it, it's going to be up arrow. But if I hold it down, then press another key, such as a letter key, then it becomes shift. So, so this this is one of the uh, one of the great things about this ultimate hacking keyboard. It's got the most programmability, and it's very extremely easy to do. But however, that's not that's not um, that does not really you know that has its own problems because if you make a key to have dual function what you you will lose the ability to hold down that key and let that key repeat for example normally if you press a key like let's say s it will just repeat you know but not if if you make it into a dual function for example right now i press the up arrow it will not repeat so it's very annoying so if I need uh, repeating arrows, I have to go back to holding down mod and press, you know, the I key. So that that's the issue about the dual functionality. You know, the dual functionality of keys. There's the app. There's an application on online. You go to my blog and you'll find it on on Linux that allows you to have that. But that's no good if you do it via the software via operating system. So the ultimate hacking keyboard is actually better because it's it's done via the firmware, so you don't have glitches. On the other hand, if you install one of those Linux, you know, X11 something something, I forgot what's the name, but you can find the name by going to, let me show you. Okay, so Linux key binding. Okay, so here is the Linux key binding tutorial about everything you need to do on Linux. And, uh, you know, so first of all, read this guide, you know, Linux Keyboard Software Guide that gives you an overview of uh, how do you uh, rebind keys on Linux. So we have the most basic, which, which is the GUI building in most desktop, Linux desktop. Then you have, anyway, I want to show you the um, yeah, there's a software, you know, there's a bunch of softwares, each one does one thing. So there's one called, um, yeah, this one. Space powers dual key configure modifier keys to act as another key when pressed and released on their own. X escape, escape. So that's the, that's the one you install. So this this utility allows you to have to make keys to have dual function, which is good, but it's not as good as the, you know, the ultimate hacking uh, keyboard because it's uh, done in firmware, which means you don't have glitches. When you use this, you know, X X escape, you know, you have glitches all the time. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing, and maybe that's it for today. How long I've been talking? So, Andrew says, so, so, so hold on a second. You said you did juggling. Yeah, juggling. I can show you some juggling. Uh, well, juggling, so let's see. Let's see if I can find my video. So, did you see? Yeah, I was a big time juggler, you know, when I was a teenager, around 16 to 18, and and, and up to when I was 30. So I was, because when I was a teen, I wanted to be the greatest juggler. Uh, so I have a bunch of articles here, uh, best ball juggling, a uh, bunch of videos that are the best jugglers in the world. I have collected some of the videos. They are the best jugglers in the world. Okay. Uh, juggling is quite a big topic because there's a lot to go into. You, there's a style, there's number of, like to most people, if you haven't 
uh, being in the juggling community, you you know the immediate question is like how many balls you can juggle. Like oh, how many balls? That that's idiotic. Okay. Uh, by the way, the world record is like uh, uh, twelve, twelve or ten, and they count throws. How many throws? Basically, they only make twelve throws or I mean twenty twenty four throws or something like that. Because once you are you you have more than ten balls, it becomes it becomes very difficult. So balls, then you you can also juggling clubs. Clubs actually, um, the record number is higher than balls, I think. But anyway, I collected some of these uh, uh, world world record um, holders. So there's a style and there's best jugglers. And of course, there's competition. Um, so I, when I was a teen, I wanted to be, you know, one of the greatest juggler. So I practiced a lot. Uh, I can do five balls. Um, anyway, uh, I can, I can, I, you know, I, I could show it, but I haven't been juggling for more than ten years, for for fifteen, twenty years. You, I can still do five. Uh, there's a video of me juggling. It's, I, it's somewhere. And also, you know, so you go, you go to, you go to my website, okay, juggling performance arts. Then you'll see uh, many interesting articles I've written about juggling. So copy. So let me show you, okay. I'm I'm gonna show you a keyboard macro with the Ottoman hacking keyboard, okay. So let's see. So you can see. Let me show you the keyboard. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to go here. I want to copy the URL and go to Emacs and paste the URL there. So what I can do is you see I press this key. That will put a cursor to the URL field and copy it. Then I press this key. That will switch to the last application. Now I want to paste so. Actually, this is not the place, but let me just use this. Okay. So I want to paste. So in Safly keys, it's a V key. I mean, yeah, it's a quality V. But however, I can also do this. You know, so it's all single key press operation. Okay, so now I'm back in Emacs. Cut this. Go to keyboard. And uh, wait, wait, wait. Why is my? Why is this? Ah. Wait. Not, let's go to talk. Start talk show. Today's talk show. Paste the juggling here. Make a link. And the uh, new window. XA start command log mod. So in this one, close. Do I want to save? No. Wait. What? Oh, I want to close the window, not the buffer. So here is the all my Emacs commands. You can see. So I have just pasted juggling performance right did it right there. So show in browser. Um, yeah, juggling. So first of all, you will see um, some of the greatest jugglers: ball juggling, and uh, there's club juggling, and uh, ring juggling. Uh, Thomas Diaz, you know, he he's he's one of the greatest. And you know, in the juggling community, there are also quite a lot of different characters. Uh, this guy Anthony Gatto, he is the the most. He he has the most world record. You know he's one of the greatest. You know actually one of the you know let's say top three, greatest juggler in human history, Anthony Gatto. Uh, and you know for a juggler you don't make much. You know he's he was performing at Las Vegas, but I think he quit. You know because you get older you have to retire. You know once you are past. 30 something you have to retire just like uh, every other sports and and juggling is unfortunate in that 
you don't have you know you don't have prestige such as let's say figure skating or or uh, track and field running or basketball uh, or football you know you can make a lot of money but not so with juggling you know if you are the greatest juggling you go to circus you go to Las Vegas do shows and you know you don't unless you are one of the best otherwise you don't make you know you you have no future and these two uh, these are brother and sisters they are Vova and Ogla Kachenko they are from Russia they are also they are the greatest uh, club jugglers so they are in California because they, they applied for citizenship they trying to so anyway they went to uh, computer science like one of them or both of them they tried to uh, learn programming instead <laughs> uh, so anyway so you see some of the great great jugglers then you also have these conical surface juggling this is kind of a special juggling juggling is very much related to math so this guy juggling in a cone okay and you can also there's also bounce juggling there's quite a lot so if you are you know if you get into juggling uh, and the math part of juggling that's very fascinating the the uh, side swap notation you know let's say three balls okay let's say three balls normally you can juggle there's a pattern you know imagine your ball makes a trace so once you juggle they form a trace now this 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 is a stone ball and this is metal ball they are heavy if I drop them I'm, I'm going to have trouble so I, I don't want to I don't even want to try it here. I have balls, you know. I have balls there. Let me see. I mean, let me see what you guys are saying. So I imagine if you juggle, you know, they. If you imagine the balls forms a line, be tra you know, a trail behind it. You then you can see a shape. They they trace out a figure. So that's a pattern. So some. Uh, mathematicians or jugglers they have they started to create a notation for different patterns of juggling so th that notation is called side 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 swap okay side swap notation uh, and this is uh, very much mathematics there's a Wikipedia article on that you can um, you can you can read about side swap uh, notation and also there there is a Java applet that shows juggling you know like you can just give it a side swap notation and it will draw people juggling that particular pattern so this side swap notation is a notation to show the 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 the, the pattern of the balls where it moves for example three ball juggling actually it makes better sense if I uh, show it. So let me get my balls to see if I can do. Now I haven't juggled for for twenty years, for, for fifteen years. Okay, so you just have to bear me. I'm not going to do a good job. So anyway, three balls. You so so you have this basic pattern. You see this this is called cascade. Okay, so there's a, there's there's a pattern. Okay, so you can see uh, what the fuck. So 
so there's a basic pattern then there is a um, re so that that's called reverse cascade okay so they go backwards yeah fuck it so they go backwards that's called re reverse cascades and each one uh, they have a notation and also you can do for example one hand with three balls you throw them up high then you throw the second one then you throw the third one then you catch them you know one hand three balls um, so there are some different patterns uh, and so th so that's a side swap notation very interesting it gets interesting uh, you know then th then you have the obit thing in the side swap notation obit things means Obit means, for example, if you're juggling four, ball, four balls, one way to do it is the left hand you juggle two balls, the right hand juggle two balls. They, they never cross. Okay, that's one. That's one of the simple way. Uh, but you can cross them. So so. If you don't cross them, you can see the ball is always on your left side. You know they never go to the the other side. So a ball forms a orbit. You can, you know, that's called an orbit. Um, well, I, I'm not explaining this correctly, but anyway, you read, you you go read Wikipedia and <laughs> and read my articles, because there are there are some math questions about this. For example, from from a given notation, can you dis can you determine how many orbits are there? Anyway, so that that's it about juggling. Um, so how long have I been talking? It's pretty fucked up. I, I I could do a better job, but I haven't been juggling for fifteen years. Oh, whoop! Someone gave me ten dollars. Thank you, Jagan. Chocolates unite. You know, actually, you know, I should. If I practice a little bit, I could show you quite a few tricks. You know, and I can still do. Even I, I haven't been juggling, but I can. You can, for example, you can do with the claw style, which means you know, like normally you you juggle like that. You know, I have cross sides, so normally you juggle like that. But you can also juggle it like that. So in, your your palm faces down. You can do three. You can do five. I think five is the maximum. I've seen you know one of the greatest juggler do, and you can also do it overhead. You know, um, like that. So so it's uh, juggling is quite fun, especially for those of you you know you have repetitive you know using the keyboard too much, like Alan. <laughs> I think Alan, you you go sometimes you take a break and do juggling, right? Actually, I should get back to that habit. And also, let me let me tell you, there are people you can do it behind your back, you know, like cascade three balls, but do it like that, like without what looking at the balls completely. You can do that. You know, I've seen, you know, for example, that uh, Thomas Diaz. He's done that. Uh, Thomas Diaz. I have a video of him on YouTube. Uh, wait, uh, not here. Best uh, juggler, the, this, this second one. So anyway, you go to my website. You, you search for Xali juggling. So actually, I have a video of myself juggling. Let me show you that. That's better. Video, okay. Let's see video. Uh, no, that's my pen spinning. That's um, yeah. Uh, it's on 
it's on my personal blog. I know where to find it, but um, yeah. Well, anyway, let me read the comments. Let's see what you guys are saying. Actually, I want to find... Now that that is a uh, a viral picture of someone, a girl using her feet to uh, shoot arrows. That went viral because it's a girl and she's uh, showing her ass. Anyway, I have a me a, a photo of me juggling. Should I should I show it? So by the way, I've been using uh, Ultimate Hacking Keyboard for a month. Great, I love the mouse mod, but the comfort could be better. Okay, Andrew says I'm still here. I just mostly wanted to know about your experience traveling back then. I've been too many countries before, but nowadays it's a lot different because everyone, uh, because everyone phones Google Translator Act. While you left to Paraguay at a pretty young age, age did you speak Spanish or uh, or Garani no I don't know what is Garani no I don't I well I did I did spend one year to learn uh, to learn um, Spanish okay okay what what am I doing I'm kind of now confused what is the So 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 yeah. So in um, uh, I'm gonna show Google Maps. Okay. So okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to show you show you the 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 video of me juggling. Uh, you know the the web ch the website changes the search engines changes over the years. I have a page that's na uh, that's named profile of Xali, but now it's hard to find. Keycap profile. You know you know why it's hard to find because the web search they focus on what everyone searches if you know so if you search profile of Xali you know the keycap profile my page on keycap profile that's the most popular because that is actually something people search people are interested nobody would be interested about you know Xali profile or, or, or personal history so so in turn these days you cannot search you know you cannot find a web page that you know exists it's hard to find uh, 
maybe uh, Google will do it. Google. You know, Google about 10 years ago, yeah, there it is, uh, study profile, you know, they encourage people, you know, things change on the web. Back then you have blogs, you have blog sphere, blogger sphere, you know, uh, jargon. Uh, and Google have has Google Plus, everyone is talking about how Google is telling you how you, sh you can create a profile, you know, and so on. And that's forgotten, you know, today it's th that is uh, basically forgotten. So this page is basically a profile of me. You can find my contacts on Twitter or uh, Skype and, and things like that. Uh, and some of them is old, you know, I have LinkedIn, YouTube, some of them I almost never log in. Like Facebook, I haven't, I haven't logged in since uh, five years ago. Live journal, I haven't logged in for like 10 plus years, and Flickr and Yahoo and things like that. So you can see some of the oldest website, DeviantArt, Slash Dot, Delicious. Those are the dates I, I have an account on them, and Stumble upon, and MySpace, and Orkut. <laughs> Orkut, by the way, you guys probably don't know, Orkut is Google's first social network, which is uh, extremely popular. Uh, very successful, but then Brazilians took over, so eventually Google killed it. Like 10 years ago, Google, Google simply killed it. But it, it was very popular. But not as, you know, popular, not, not compared to Facebook. Facebook has f far more people, but, uh, but, okay, so hold on a second, let me find, uh, there. So this page is my oldest page written started in, in 1998, 1996. Personal info about uh, Xali. So I give a short biography of myself and uh, you can find um, a photo of me juggling, I mean a video somewhere. Okay, so here. So this is me in this precise location. Now that that's a living room right there. This is my mom's place. So this is 2004, 16 years ago. Uh, and uh, there is the video of me juggling. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Okay, that's that's uh, that's about that. Let's stop that. Let's go back to live stream and let's answer questions. So, okay, so let me t let me tell you a little bit about my um, my. <laughs> I don't know what am I doing now. Okay, let's go to wh where you wanna. Where do I want to go? Google, Google Maps. Let me tell you where I've been. A short biography, very, very brief biography. So if you have specific questions you want to ask me, say it, okay? Andrew. I talked about this like a couple of times in my past video. Uh, you know, it's long history. So I was born in Taiwan. 1968. Oh shit. Okay, Taiwan is here, okay. Yeah. You see, that's Taiwan. Then, when I was 14, me and my family moved to, in trying to immigrate to USA. You know, try, we tried to, to do that, but instead we moved to, as a way to do that, we, we moved to 
Paraguay, Asuncion here. So I lived here when when I was fourteen for a year. Then I learned Spanish here there for a year. So um, I don't remember much of it now. But I you know I learned. I was quite studious trying to learn Spanish. So I have some conversation level Spanish in Paraguay. So then we we moved to Guatemala here and Salvador. We lived in Guatemala for about half a year. Salvador for one week. Uh, in Salvador, I think there's a war back then. This is 1985 or, or 86. Anyway, we lived in Guatemala for half a year. Then fly, fly, fly to Montreal, Canada. So I was in Montreal when I was 16. Okay, Montreal, Canada here. Then we moved from Montreal to Vancouver. They lived there, me and my family. I'm gonna. I'm not going to elaborate. But anyway, we we lived in Vancouver for half a year. Then they went back to Taiwan. Then I, on myself, I moved back to Montreal. I was 16. Uh, took a bus, Greyhound bus that takes five days. So this is 1985. Yeah, 86, 85 or 86. So I lived in Montreal on my own, illegally, basically, you know, I mean the process, at the time I was in the process of to applying for um, Can Canadian citizenship uh, as a refugee or something like that. So anyway, I, I moved to, I lived in Montreal on my own when I was 16 to 19. And I wanted to be the greatest juggler, so I was I was working for a company under the table, of course, three dollars an hour, and also making bagels. Then we, then eventually in 1989, my mom got me a, a green card to USA, so I moved from Montreal to to um, to Mountain View, California, basically right this place I'm doing video from. Uh, so that's a brief history of my traveling and life. So does that answer your question? Any more questions? So that I'm um, I'm to this day blown away by the ability Chinese people have to learn languages of countries they uh, they move to. It doesn't matter. So I learned I learned English by uh, reading, literally by just uh, memorizing words. I talked about that a few times. Uh, why are you not using Linux? My OS X my OS is floated. No, it's not. I talked about. Mac OS versus Windows versus Linux, like two two videos ago. You might check that out. You know, it's it's kind of a boring, it's a perpetual, lame, boring topic. Like which one to use, Mac or Windows or or, or Linux? You know, it's a because it's common. You know, it's, it has no depth. Wait, there's something. Okay. So, but. It's a common question. It's not, you know, it's, people want to know. Uh, basically, if you want to play games, if you are a gamer, Windows is the only choice. If you have money, you have a lot of money, you, you like to show off, and uh, Mac is your choice, okay? It's e and it's easier to use. The Win and Linux is the most fucked up fuck system in the world. You know, the, you, cannot, you, you, you cannot do anything with it, it's a problem. Except if you are a developer, if 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 the only purpose you use a computer is to program uh, Python, Perl, you know, web dev things like that, then Linux is a good choice. Not even if you need uh, Java. Okay, Linux is uh, the worst thing every way. But it's free. That's you know, if you want free, you want you you use Linux.
Okay, because I said perfectly figure, perfect. I think that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Reaper says, "Good morning, Reaper." Another pre pre roll epoch times ad before I get to watch. Yeah, epoch times. Uh, the, 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 the best Emacs juggler. Juggling is there no philosophical tradition? Cause I is not versed in. Uh, parenthesis juggling. I think the biggest mo demotivator for juggling for me was that other people care about stuff like music more. Mm, yeah, juggling always have the stigma because you know uh, when you think of juggling, it's a bunch of clowns. But juggling can be the great. You know it. Okay, here's a very interesting thing about juggling uh, in a juggling community. There is a, you, you might call him an asshole because he's very known, he's known as asshole, okay? Because every time you do juggling, like, like to most of you, most normal people, when it comes to juggling, they think of clowns, like juggling a chainsaw with a ball and uh, an apple, and you take a bite out of that. It's a fucking, fucking scum okay that, that that's scum that's i i don't want nothing to do with that <laughs> you know clowns a chainsaw and juggling that, that's not by the way that's easy that's very easy to do in you know in juggling sometimes something that's extremely difficult even just with three balls extremely difficult but you cannot perceive it for mo normal people for most people you see juggling is like clowning it make you happy that's what you like to see that's what you get paid that's that's how you get paid if you are a jugger. You go to the street, you make fun, you know, you make a humor. Then people give you money. But on the other hand, if you know you can do that within one year. You know, you get you practice, you practice social skills, you practice crowd control, you know, that's communication. You know, you need to be social, you know, Alan. <laughs> Alan the you know you need you, 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 you need to be a brother, you know. Hey bro, you know, talk to talk to people control you know observe people's emotion what they want you know you make fun you know after a year you can do that you can go to the street and do perform performances you can make a few hundred dollars a month if you, if you are good cheer people that that's the thing the the primary thing is to uh like a mc master of ceremony to lead people you know it's not about juggling the skill on the other hand you can you can spend ten years to master juggling, just like the greatest figure skater. You know the most difficult tricks. You spend let's 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 say five years to to master some uh, technical juggling. You go to the street, you perform it. Nobody cares. Like they they don't understand. They don't they don't you know they don't know. That's the thing. So juggling. You have the situation where you know juggling perceived by most most people is just clowns fun but that's not how I want to perceive juggling to be you know that's not I don't like anything I never don't want to juggle with chance or apple fuck you know or do like there's some tricks okay there's a lot of juggling tricks you know for example I I haven't been juggling for 10 years but I can show you after you know one hour practice like some sometimes they do they for example, three ball juggling, they will hold the ball, like the, my left hand will juggle two balls, and meanwhile I hold one ball on the, with my right hand, I'll just move it. So it has a re illusion, like, you know, I'm juggling, you know, it's fun, you know, then, then, then the idiotic crowd will, oh my god, <laughs> you know, they, they find it funny, and they give you tips, you know. But that's idiot, that's inelegant, I don't, you know, you, you know, you don't want for certain people like me. Or many of you, for example, if you are you prefer elegant programming languages, you fucking despise C plus plus. You will never touch it. You know these some people. You when you do juggling all these diff tricks, there are so many varieties and math mathematical connections. You don't want do those tricks or sometimes bounce with your elbow like juggle and then bounce or some, sometimes bounce your head. You know that's yeah that's that's tricks that's fun. But that's not for you, you know. There's a difference between uh, different styles. But the thing is, if you are a technical juggler, people don't appreciate it. That's the thing. Unlike, for example, compared to figure swimming, uh, I mean figures, figure skating, for example, there. 
people appreciate the elegance, you know. But when it comes to juggling, everyone wants just, you know, they, they perceive it as clowning. That's what they, you know, the kind of, you can say, you can call it ignorance. They don't appreciate extremely elegant technical uh, juggling. So there is a character, actually, he's uh, one of the great juggler, but, you know, one of the great. His name is uh, Jason Garfield, okay. I... I, I have a video of him somewhere here, but I don't I don't remember where. J look up Jason Garfield, okay? J S N Garfield. I think he also has a Wikipedia entry, and he also have there it is Wikipedia entry, okay? Uh, by the way, this you know the last time I was in the juggling community that's 15 years ago. You know you get old, you you don't you know you don't do these kind of things anymore and also I become um, you know I become poor and you know so anyway Jason Garfield so this is you know he's he was born in 1970s 74 you know when you go, get old you don't do these kind of things anymore but he anyway he is known as an asshole he is a very technical juggler okay he's a extremely technical juggler like, like think about in programming community like someone who is a great programmer but who is art who will like say you go fuck yourself you know they'll be rude to all the others he's one of that guy he always criticizes just like I you know I, I talked before he criticizes all this clowning fuck okay he don't want none of that he's a great one of the greatest uh, technical juggler Jason Garfield Okay, so so that's that's it about that juggling. Uh, let's see what else. That's it. I think that's it for today. What the fuck is that room? Yeah, my room. I'm sorry, I showed it. Actually, I didn't want to show it because. Um, you know, my room is like I, I was, I was planning to just show a little bit myself, but then I have to do juggling. Then I have to. Oh, hey, Emily. Uh, okay, that's it for today. I think. Anything else? So, how long have I been talking? One hour and twenty minutes almost. Okay, thank you, J. Thank you, Jagan. For the money. Uh, wait. My system is fucking so slow. Wait, where is it? Uh, oh, thank you, Alan. Uh, clear your room and switch from Emacs to Vim. How did Alan's message end up in the uh, end up in moderation? You only said Russian. Talking about behind the back juggling. Sounds like he's ready to join us. I have a friend. The YouTube let us track your message on DuckDuckGo is a classic. What do you mean? Uh, you know, one time, you know, uh, this is fun, okay? I was, you know, so I was telling you, you know, there's a juggling, you can do it behind. So, so one time during around 2005, I was trying to master that. So, so I would sit on the floor and watching TV or some movies, okay, whenever I watch some movies, Batman or something. So I would just take a ball, you know, you can, you can actually learn it. So take a ball and just, just do it. Just, just do something like that. And just do that, just keep doing that for hours, 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 and you will eventually be able to juggle behind your back without looking at it. I, w I wasn't, I never uh, actually uh, got to that point. Phenomenal, okay, what are your current thoughts on B B4T flu, what's B4T flu? Okay, so that's it. Bye, guys.
it's a great today's video I thought today's video is one of the most lousy because sometimes I cannot tell <laughs> okay bye guys